what will the institution of marriage look like in the United States going forward? So marriage has been on the decline for several reasons. Um, one of them is the no consequence, no fault divorce. Um, it's the high divorce rates, over 50. Um, it's understanding more about female hypergamy and just how um, male-female um, interaction just plays out and just having more time in human history to just learn what we're doing and the nuances of things and why we do the things we do, why we say the things we do, why we think the things we do. And so every generation is able to have um, more generations uh, previous to them to learn the world and to learn what's going on. And so um, maybe before the internet, from an older generation, you're in a society or community that uh, promotes marriage and everyone else around you is doing it, so therefore you do it. And you're not just gonna be like the off person, right? You're just gonna like follow the herd because that's just what you're conditioned to believe that things are. But now with um, the invention of the internet, you're able to get more perspectives. There's more information uh, that's more readily available. And so um, not only can you learn from your own mistakes, but you can learn from other people's mistakes and other people's stories and what other people went through. So as a young guy myself, if I can see that 50% of marriages end in divorce and um, in general the man's going to be making more money because just the way male-female plays out spiritually and also testosterone and estrogen, just the guy's going to take that dominant role, the alpha role. That's what's going to attract the girl in the first place. So, you know, people always say, well, the girl can be um, taken advantage of in divorce court too. It's like, yes, if she happened to be the breadwinner, but um, if she was the breadwinner going into it, um, for the most part, she's not even going to marry the guy doing worse than her. She's going to go at her level or above. So, yeah, once in a while it does work that way, and then um, the woman gets uh, taken advantage of in divorce court. But for what women are attracted to in general, she's going to go at her level or above and expecting the man to be that provider, that dominant, that alpha. So he's generally going to make more money, and so he's going to be the one that has the most to lose with the laws in the courts. So. Whenever we talk about marriage and um, people that don't want to get married and red pill, um, someone will always mention that with, uh, oh, well, like, it can happen to the woman too, right? But it's like, yes, it can, but in general, it happens to the man for those reasons that I just uh, described. And so uh, for myself, I was, uh, you know, born with white mom, black dad. They weren't married. I grew up with my mom. And uh, it's one of those things in previous generations where people go, Oh, like so and so had a kid out of wedlock, and it's like it's like looked down upon. But those shaming tactics don't work in 2021 because people are waking up to things like the laws and uh, divorce court and just um, female hypergamy, just different ways of thinking about life in general. So for me, I don't want to sign a contract with the government or the church to um, prove my love to a woman. We could get married verbally. If I really wanted to, like I could just like find a, a girl right now and we could just say, oh, like we're married, just be adults and like make the verbal commitment. That's equal worth to any piece of paper from the state or the church. So people are um, rethinking these concepts and uh, people are starting to think outside the box and not feel so pressured to just follow the herd, just follow the society. You know, if 50% uh, divorce, if uh, the weather station told you that it was going to be a 50% chance of rain today at any given point. Would you walk outside your house, go for like a five mile walk without an umbrella? Of course you wouldn't. Like that's like a coin flip on whether you're going to get soaked at some point in your walk. So when it comes to marriage, um, a lot of people, especially women, they get very panicked by um, a lot of men that just don't want to play the game. They want to stay out of it. And it's not that men are abandoning women. It's just uh, we're looking at the way things are. And the the more that we progress in time, we have more generations previous to us to learn from about the world. And we can kind of come together and say, this makes sense for a collective society. This doesn't make sense. And why does it make sense? Or why does it not make sense? Or why does this person think it makes sense, but this person doesn't? And we can kind of... Um, come together over time to find a better way of doing things. So at, at some point in human history, if we're all just nomadic, uh, foraging 
for our next meal, you know, whether it's fruits, vegetables, or hunting, or fishing, or whatever, um, you know, it's, it's more advantageous when we're not destructive. When we come together with the other humans, like, hey, we don't need to kill each other over territory, over food, over your religion's different, whatever petty stuff comes up that uh, isn't advantageous for us to be killing each other. So we can decide as humans, okay, let's form a society, let's create some kind of rule. You know, let's, uh, even, if, even if it's rules that we create based on what we observe, we all do better when there's some sort of rule. And now we, we might agree or disagree on what those rules should be, and it's always going to be a gray area, but what I'm saying is through time, we are able to see what has worked and what hasn't worked based on our perception, and we're able to move forward. So it, people think it's like shocking that uh, like someone doesn't want to get married or like the rise of men that uh, don't want to get married. It's not shocking. It's not a movement. It's just um, an observation on reality and how you want to go live your life. It's like, we don't have to just, oh, well, like everyone else got married, so you should too. Like, uh, me as a 26 year old guy, like, well, will people think that I have no game? Will people think that I can't get a girl? Or will people think that I'm weird, I'm gay, I'm whatever, like, because I don't want to get married? Or I, I don't want to be a man and like actually provide for a woman. I just want to take the easy way out. Those shaming tactics don't work. The whole like, oh, they had a kid out of wedlock. They, I mean, it doesn't work because um, we're in a new era and we're able to see things and it's uh, very real stuff for a man to get into a marriage and you know later the relationship doesn't work or for whatever reason and uh, the no-fault divorce and now with social media that uh, increases a woman's hypergamy and it's actually encouraged with the culture and the music and the media encouraging her to express that hypergamy people are becoming disposable which if, if something doesn't work out for whatever reason between you and a family member, you and a friend, you and a, a job, you and a certain girl, if every party there has the right to move on to what they think is a better situation, um, nobody owes you anything. So we have the right to move on to different things, to greener pastures. But when you add in marriage with these laws, one person moving on to greener pastures, um, it, that affects the other person because you signed a contract. So um, the, a contract's useless when someone benefits by breaking it. When there's no consequence, there's no fault. So um, when we're seeing older men, oh, I'm in reference to me, I'm 26. Me seeing older men that are married, and um, they get divorced, and then all their money's taken. Or then maybe last year with the the shutdown, he loses his job. While they're going through this divorce process so he owes alimony based on what he was making but now he doesn't make that so if he can't make his payments there's a threat of jail and then she takes the house and the money now she's having sex with another guy in the house that he paid for so it's like um it's one thing if it didn't work out or you want to move on i mean that just happens in general but uh you're not gonna like take my house you're not gonna take my money like that doesn't make any sense you know, so, but the, people always come back with, uh, like, oh, like, you just don't want to commit, or, uh, it, it just, like, they, they have some weird uh, shaming language based on the direction that they're seeing in society. Women thinking men are abandoning them. And it's not that men are abandoning women. I mean, men are never going to lose love and attraction and lust and whatever, all of that for women. I mean, male-female interaction is what it is. And it's been that way since the beginning of time. It, it's that way now. It'll be that way in the future. But um, based on a specific culture and the laws of that culture and uh, just what's going on in world events, that affects things. You know, giving a girl a cell phone now as a little kid where she can just open Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and look at celebrities and then she sees a billboard with a model with all this makeup and oh, you need to be her. Now she thinks that needs to be her. And uh, then it's like, oh yeah, you can do whatever you want. Feminism, you go to college, party, uh, pursue this career, pursue multiple guys. There's gonna be someone uh, high value waiting for you at 35 when you're ready to settle down and have your kids. It's destructive language because, sorry to say, that's not the case. Um, there's a trade-off. There's a 50-50, there's a karma to things. And so yeah, both genders should always strive to do better in terms of how they're treating the other gender, in terms of what they're learning about themselves, 
trying to improve themselves um, to be a better partner, to be a better fit. But um, it, when you have that marriage contract, that's a legal binding contract. So like if I made a bunch of money, what's my incentive to just sign a contract when I can just take care of her anyways with that money? And then if she decides to leave or whatever, she's free to do that, but I'm not just gonna have everything stripped from me because she just wanted to leave. Like, just let her leave the way it is. I don't need to sign that contract. You know, like I was saying with uh, with college and social media, um, we want to promote feminism and um, how dare you imply that a woman should like make you food in the kitchen. It's like, okay, well, I get it. There's a 50-50, there's a balance with anything, but if you're gonna tell a nation of young women that not only they need to look like this billboard model, they need to wear this makeup, they need to wear these high heels, they need to look a certain way, and then you're gonna tell them to go to college and pursue their career, sleep around if you want, join a sorority, do whatever, um, get tattoos, get piercings, um, just dispose of guys whenever you want to, and then there's gonna be some high value dude at 35 just waiting for her to have a kid, um, that's not how it works, you know? So, I mean, it, it doesn't do women any good to promote this feminist narrative that's destroying the culture. There's nothing wrong with a, a guy being masculine and with a girl being feminine. You know, toxic masculinity, like the another one of the, those uh, shaming tactics. Like, yeah, like there's extreme examples of toxic masculinity. Like if you just want to take your testosterone and your anger and you want to just go and like, like kill a bunch of people or just like hurt people, just go on a rampage and just like, like slaughter a nation or something. It's like, yeah, like some obvious stuff. Like I said, we can look at human history. Like, okay, here's what what's conducive for our society and here's what's not. So how about let's not have wars? How about let's not just randomly destroy the environment? So let's be a little bit conscious about what we're doing. But with being conscious about it, um, not only are we holding the men accountable, but we can also hold the women accountable. And so it's not to toxic masculinity to point out where feminism is just super destructive. Because biologically for a woman, after she gets her period through her late to uh, late teens to early 20s, so whenever she gets her period, like age 10 to 14, up through late teens and early 20s, that's gonna be like the peak fertility. So on a biological level, that's when it makes the most sense for her to be having a kid or to be locking down the highest value guy. Now obviously we have laws in place and we uh, have an age of consent at a certain time we have to draw the line somewhere but when we draw the line in like in california it's 18 certain states it's 16 certain states it's 17 when we draw the line somewhere on um in that time of a woman's peak fertility and then we also have okay you go to high school and you have no choice you have to go there and then oh she should go to college be, what are you going to do without a degree like you got to go work uh, women in the workforce feminism empowerment so we've taken a woman's peak fertility high school college say like 14 to uh 22 and we have them in school in desks and then like like preparing for careers and then they go through their 20s work in that career and then at 30 35 now she wants to be a mom now she wants to settle down N now she wants you to forget um all those times that you weren't good enough but now you're at, getting to your prime in your 30s and you just owe some commitment or some marriage or some piece of paper because she's a feminist like no it just doesn't work that way so it's going to be interesting to see the future of marriage because it's definitely declining and um the people that uh run the show they want to keep the institution of marriage they want to keep that structure that population control but it's how we're balancing that agenda with what's actually beneficial for both men and for women because people aren't uh fooled with Oh, just do it because everyone else did. Sign that paper. It's a new era, new way of thinking.